What better Christmas present than Pete Bar Beauty for page five? Oh, thanks. <laughs> and TV five, and and the landmark has their Christmas present with Pete Bar Beauty because that's where you're appearing. Yeah, with starring. Faye McKay, who's uh, oh, one yeah. of the great ladies that this town has ever seen. Faye's lived in town. I think she first came here from Denver or someplace and uh, worked in the Bottoms Up review when she got here. With she's Breck and she's the guy. fabulous. And she did something Oh, she's do. wonderful. Yeah, she did. And now she's working normally with Mickey Finn's show, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, Fred and the band, they're on the road doing some cruise or something. So um, Faye and I are holding down the ship there. And she's a does she open the, open the show? Yeah, and she does a special piece of material that was written for her, and it's been associated with her for a long time, called The Twelve Days of Christmas, and it's wonderful. It's a great, it's the version of, you know, Partridge in a Pear Tree, as we all know, <laughs> the song time. And it's uh, sung uh, in the fashion of someone who has been celebrating for the Christmas season and attempting to sing that song. Because I don't know if you remember it from ah. school, but uh, a year after you get out of high school, if you've sung it for the Christmas play, you yeah. try to remember the lyrics, and there's 10 zillion it, lyrics. Is this the one it. where the, 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 she's drinking or something? Yeah. Starts getting drunk? And, yeah, and yeah, eventually. Cute. It's wonder Oh, it's beautifully done, too, mm. you know. Is it nice to take. be at the landmark that you've never Yeah, the landmark. landmark. Yeah, I think it's the only one I've never worked on the strip. <laughs> I think I've got them, gotten them all now. <laughs> That's a compliment, it's to a tell you the truth. Yeah, Not many people can say yeah, that. Well, I guess so. Yeah. Either that or I can't hold a job. I don't know. But I, yeah, I think I've been at the mall in uh, 25 years of uh, being there, you know, yeah. on the I, strip. I, I have to make mention, although I haven't seen your show, you have a special opening, and these are pieces from The Tonight Show of those who have introduced you. This is funny. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, it's odd because you asked me before we went on the air, I said, is your name Barbeauty or Barbuda? You know, and I said, well, I always pronounced it Barbeauty, but my family did. Because my, grand, my grandparents came from Italy, and when they settled on the East Coast, uh, immediately to Americanize, you know, they made the, the letter U, long U's, the bar beauty. Mm. But technically, in Italian, there are no long U's in any of the Latin languages, you know, Spanish or Italian or Greek or anything. So technically, barbuti is the correct ethnic way of pronouncing it. But uh, I've never made a big deal out of it because it, it never mattered. But uh, I've done The Tonight Show, I guess, probably about 100 times. <coughs> and I, for, as an introduction, I just as a gag like, I took a tape that my kids gave me one Christmas, because I never taped the shows, because like many entertainers, I hate to see myself on television. Hmm. I just hate it. I can't stand it. I run out of the room and turn off the set. I just can't stand it. And so I, uh, I brought a tape. My kids taped a bunch of shows one Christmas. They gave it to me, you know, and I said, oh, great, you know, and uh -huh. I could never watch it or anything. <laughs> so I took the tape to some guys and I said, edit out the introductions. You know, and, and doing the Tonight Show all those times, there are a lot of guest hosts. You know. So it's a series of people like uh, Bob Newhart, you know, and it just says, ladies and gentlemen, here's Pete Barbuti. And then the next one, I think, is Burt Reynolds, and he says, here's Pete Barbuti. And then David Letterman says, here's Pete Barbuti. And then David Brenner says, here's Pete Barbuti. And George Carlin says, Pete Barbuti. Wow. And the uh, next guy, wherever is McLean Stevens, says, Pete Barbuti. So it's funny, the guy put them together and they're staggered. Every other one, it's yeah. a different one. So it occurred to me, I got to put together a piece of material. And you it. weren't aware of it until you actually no, saw it. No, it never occurred to me because I've heard the name pronounced so many times. You know, like I say, uh, when they're doing it, you just don't pay attention. No. You're standing backstage. But but you put this on a big screen behind you. Yeah, on there's the stage? a couple big screens alongside the stage down there. It's kind of a cute thing. To, yeah, I like that. Did you there, did you do any other pieces of the shows, the television shows, or just that intro? Yeah, just the introduction. I have some I'm assembling of. Uh, you know, I want to put a couple other things on there to make it because a lot of locals are coming to see the show. Needless to say, this is the time of year when the locals really go out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I want to put two other things on the tape. I want to intersperse among the introduction from The Tonight Show. I want to intersperse. Oh, there's one from Merv on there, too, Merv Griffin. Well, I want to put one in there of Jan Rafferty saying, nobody's cheaper than Fletcher Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben Stepman saying, of course. You know, that's all it needs to finish the tape. I just wonder if someone coming to town will know uh, what the hell we're talking oh, about. Oh, I know? love that. Yeah, that's the, classic stuff. Yeah. Oh, boy, I love that. Um, I don't know how many times, you said a hundred times, you've done The Tonight yep, Show. Yeah, it must be close to that, yeah. I, I've never uh, timed it, but it's are, a whole Are lot. you aware, Pete, when they will replay a Tonight no, Show? No, they do that. I've had, a, a, I think, at least about a dozen replay, you know, the Best mm -hmm. of Johnny thing. And you never know when they're going to do that. And uh, I'm always concerned with uh, <laughs> doing The Tonight Show. I did it once. They try not to repeat, you know, if you're on that week, but I did it once. I taped a, a Carson show and it played on a Friday, and on a Monday they ran a Best of Johnny, and I was on that one. Wow. And what concerned me was uh, 
had I, you know, it could have been taped five years earlier, and what if I decided to do the same piece of material <laughs> or something? You know, I would have, it would have been like, is that all he knows? You know, but yeah. that's, ha that's, that's happened. Uh, I never thought of that with the comedian. Yeah, it happens, and I tell you, it happens too when you're, uh, when you're doing a bunch of talk shows because, you know, Merv uh, plays on a delay basis. Mm -hmm. And at one time, you know, there was Joey Bishop and Steve Allen. There I was know. a bunch of them on it. So you really had to be careful. You had to get play dates. Hmm. I had something happen once. I don't think I've ever told this. We got a couple minutes. Yeah, we got all okay. half hour. Well, it's not that good. <laughs> so this, this really happened. Uh, in the old days, the Steve Allen show was the first show I ever did. And that was out of uh, Hollywood. You know, they used to crazy cross from the Hollywood Ranch Market. They used to do oh, all yeah. those scenes with yeah. Louis Nye and Don Knotts and all those wonderful people, Bill Dana. And, it was a wonderful show. It really was a highlight of my life. And it used to play about two and a half weeks after you taped it. So I did a, a ridiculous routine where I would start playing the trumpet, and then I would begin to talk through the trumpet into the microphone directly, you know. And it gets a silly, hollow, metallic sound. Now, you were on, on the street doing this? Or no, I did studio? this in the studio. OK. And uh, the whole routine was based on, it was politically expedient at the time that there were cost <laughs> overruns with repairs of ships. Mm -hmm. And there was a big investigation into the uh, naval yards at New Brunswick, Connecticut, or somewhere up around there. Mm -hmm. So I did this whole routine about we're now aboard a nuclear submarine, and we're going out to sea. And the ship has been fixed by the, I forget the name of the shipyards, like General Boat Company or something, but they were right. big in the news. Mm -hmm. And the ship has just been repaired by General Dynamics or whoever it was. And there's nothing to worry about. This is a great nuclear sub, and we'd like to thank the proper. And as I kept talking, I would make my voice sound like I was going underwater, like the submarine was sinking, right? And it was funny because <laughs> a nuclear submarine was unsinkable. I mean, oh. it was foolproof. So I'm doing this routine about a nuclear sub thing, and the last thing is I play taps, you know, bah, 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 and everybody roars because it's in good taste because a yeah. nuclear submarine cannot sink. Okay, I taped the show, mm. and at the time I was staying in Seattle, I remember, because I was sitting in Seattle in a hotel room or at a house or something, and I was writing something down. I don't remember what it was, but as I was writing it, I heard the news come over, a news flash, mm. that the USS Thresher had sunk with like 175 oh. guys aboard. Wow. And they were all gone. And I was saying, oh, what a terrible tragedy. And I was listening to the news, you know, I say, that's awful. And for some reason, I was writing someone about this, the Steve Allen show. And I said, oh, my God, I taped that thing about the submarine. So I called uh, Westinghouse in LA, we're at the studio. Mm -hmm. And I said, what day is that show going to play? And they said, it's playing tonight. <sighs> now, it was already, it was about 3 in the afternoon in Seattle, which meant it's already 6 in New York, right. and it was going to play at 11 o'clock in New York or something. So I finally got a hold of the producer. Now, time was moving very quickly here. I got a hold of the producer, Melt Hoffman, and I told him. And Melt said, oh, listen, he said, this happens a lot. It probably, like, just seems that way to you. And I said, oh, Melt, no. you better check the tape. And Melt said, OK, hold. So he put me on hold, and he went and he played the tape. It was a 90-minute tape. And he ran through it as quickly as he could to get to my section. And he played it, and he came back to the phone, and he was almost in trauma. He couldn't talk. His voice was quivering. He said, it sounds like you actually sank the submarine oh. to get the routine. It was that bad. And so he said, we've got to get on this right away. Thank God you called, because it you know, would have made Steve look bad. Sure, it would have looked yeah, like it was Steve's show. fault that he let me do this on this show. And it would never have occurred to the audience. It was taped three weeks ago. You know? So they got on, and they edited the tape, and I watched it that night. And it was the stupidest thing I ever saw in my life, because it showed me why, and then this is before they had electronic editing. You right. know, they used to find a picture and cut it like with a razor blade. Yeah. yeah. And it, it showed me, it said, and now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure to have you here. I'm talking to the trumpet. It said, you know, something funny I heard yesterday. And then the audience would roar. They'd cut to the part where the audience shot was. The audience would be screaming, you know, and they'd come back to me and I'd go, boop, and then show the audience. And they were roaring. And I, nobody knew what the hell they were laughing at because they had deleted out all of the lines. And it showed me playing taps, ba ba da, and the audience screaming. And it was the stupidest thing I've ever seen in your life, you know. Incredible story. Yeah, but yeah, when you're taping, you're, you, uh, there was a time in there in all the talk shows where they said, remember, don't mention anything about airplanes, don't mention anything about ships, don't mention anything about uh, presidential assassinations yeah. or any political figures. It got to be very spooky for The point of it is, though, Pete, you can't hardly touch anything. No, if you had to be, be aware of that, yeah, what I material had, could you use? I tell you, it's very uh, spooky because on the, uh, the Tonight Show, has, uh, they get great pressure. They have so many sponsors, you know, and right. they get antsy at times, and they pay so much.
thousand, seventy five thousand for one minute spot or something. Right. So there's so many commercials that I have had pieces of material deleted from there, which I could not believe they deleted. And then from the tonight show? Yeah. And when I would ask them why, they said, Well, we get, you know, certain pressure groups. They deleted a line one night, which sounds so silly, that I was going to do a joke about a saxophone player. And I said, one of the guys in a band told me this joke, Johnny. And he said, who told you that? You know, and I said, the Mexican kid who plays tenor sax. And they deleted the word Mexican. And I asked oh. them after the show, I said, you know, they just put a boop. I said, why did you do that? And they said, well, we get a lot of le letters from peer groups. I said, but the kid is from Mexico City. He's oh. technically Mexican. Why, you know, if you said the American kid would be, and, but they get so sensitive to that. And then there was somebody on, I just flashed on another one up. Uh, somebody was on the panel from, they had just come from Oregon or something and mentioned they were in Doc's hometown and it was raining, mm -hmm. you know, and Doc said something like, that doesn't rain that much, and I did a line about it. I said, Doc, the last time I was in your hometown, I saw an old Jew putting animals on a boat. And you they know, cut that. And they delete that out because they said, well, it's anti-Semitic. I said, what are you talking about? It's biblical, you know. But they get, mm. they get sensitized, and every once in a while they'll mention something about, I know, the Khomeini thing. Oh, you know, yeah. with the hostages. Oh, yeah. There was a moratorium on that where they said, don't do any Khomeini jokes. Incredible. We've got many yeah. more questions for you, Pete. Don't go away. I have away. no more answers. That's <laughs> the only problem. We'll be right back after this. This word. is not Channel 10. I So these three guys got off this <laughs> trolley. <laughs> <laughs> My guest is the one and only Pete Barbeauty, who's appearing at the Landmark Hotel through Christmas. Yeah, or just through the 22nd, through actually. The, through the 22nd. I yeah. want to be sure and mention that, because there's a lot of local vegans who yeah. take advantage of you when you're yeah, here. Yeah, we've had a lot of the local people come in, and I'm delighted with them, because I love them. Pete, we're talking about editing some yeah, of the things that are Yeah, I was going to tell you, and I said, what do we get on the air? Because this is fascinating. I did a Tonight Show once and made reference to Doc. This was, you know, like seven, eight years ago when Doc was dressing more flamboyantly yeah. and being crazy. Yeah. And I made reference to, I don't know what I said, but Johnny said, the band doesn't always get here on time. He made some, well, I was sitting on the panel with him, and I made this statement, I said, don't tell me about the band. As I said, I saw Doc and the guys last night in the parking lot under a Datsun trying to smoke the shock absorbers. <laughs> and that night, somebody told me that they deleted something from that. And I said, what are you talking about? And I said, yeah, so I watched it. And they deleted the word Datsun. Oh. And I said, why did you do that? And they said, well, Chevrolet spon is one of our sponsors. I said, in other words, it's all right to imply that the band is warped <laughs> and twisted as long as you don't use a competitor's brand name. And they said, yes, we don't care what you say about the band. Oh. So the, econo I mean, the, uh, the censorship is, is economic most of the time. It's not, uh, mm. it's not artistic you know, or moral. Well, you know what's so fascinating about that, Pete, is the fact I hear all of us do on occasion bleeps yeah. on all shows, but I always thought, to tell you the truth, they were heavy, heavy words. That, yeah, yeah obscenities, and maybe somebody would slip out, but yeah, I'd never be realized. surprised at how frequently the, uh, the edit is, uh, is economic. And even in the case of the ethnic things, it's economic because they, they feel that if they get pressure that their sponsors will get letters from a, a, from a minority group or even a majority group, you know, saying uh, you bet we're not going to buy your product if you, you know, say that well, on then, your show. Well, then how does, how does Rickles get by? Well, Rickles gets by because uh, I think that's expected of Don. I think he can do that and get by because that is, in fact, his act. That isn't a facet of his act. Mm -hmm. That is what he does. You know, in fact, Johnny gets by with a, a lot of stuff. But there again, he's really the standard of talk show host, so know. nobody's going to say anything to him about it. You know, speaking of, of Carson, just to be on as many times as you have been on, Pete, is a, in itself is a credit, because I know for a fact not everybody can do that. He's very discriminating about yeah, his uh, comics and a lot of his guests, and you are one of those who... Well, I don't, I don't know why, but he's, I usually do something a little bit, you know, left field when I do this show, a little bit unusual. And I think they like that, and I think the production people find that, that it works good because uh, I know everybody has a tendency when you're doing that type of show five days a week for 25 years or whatever, mm -hmm. you have a tendency to slip into complacency a little bit. And I think if something new, if you do something new a little bit and shake the whole boat a little bit, I think everybody comes up another notch. You know, it sort of wakes them up a little. And I think they get a better looking show. The end result is 
a little more spark. So they always, every time, you know, they call me, they say, look, you know, can you come in next week or the week after, or, you know, two weeks from now or something and do something really weird because, you know, yeah, Papa, yeah. we'd like you to. But, but I, you, you still should take credit because of the fact I know, or at least I believe, that, that Johnny Carson, if, if he doesn't like you, you don't get on the show. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's true. I that's mean, most of them would be that way. I, yeah, I that's, think. in fact, that's absolutely true. Johnny is, uh, Johnny does have final approval. The only time there are certain people that he will never use, and on occasion they get on if there's a guest host, mm -hmm. you know, they'll slip them in and do them uh, if the producers, in fact, think that the, would be good numbers for the show. Yeah. There's another thing that a lot of people don't realize about that show, and that is it's the only show in television where you are not allowed to lip sync. No guest artist comes on and does a lip sync. No, I never knew that either. Yeah, most people think, you see all the other talk shows that were on for years, you know, and even Merv is still on, and Pat Boone's got a new show, which I just done, which I think plays on the Christian channel or something. Hmm, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, all those shows that have ever been on, uh, Letterman, you know, you lip sync, mm -hmm. all those things. But when you do the Tonight Show, their premise is that if our band can't play it, it can't be played. And it really is, in essence, is true. You I, know, I totally believe it. Because it's a sensational it. band. It's the best there is. And so when you go in there, their point is that, you know, a lot of the young rock artists will want to lip sync because they have, well, we got the pop up right. we got the, and they say, no, if you can't sing it live, uh, we won't use you. That's you know, a credit. So they say, well, what about, you know, what if I, you know, if my voice isn't good? They say, listen, if you recorded this song, you sold 39 million copies. If you can't sing it again, you know, hmm. you don't deserve to be on the show. And I, they, that's really a credit to his show, though. Well, because, sure it is. Uh, yeah. What they will do, Dennis, is they'll add, they'll, they'll bring in, like, the record company usually will pay to bring in background singers to add to the band. They'll put them in a little booth next to the band so they can sing the background so it sounds oh, yeah. more like the recorded version, mm -hmm. you know. And they'll add a couple synthesizers or something like that or guitars. But by and large, the band is, uh, is incredible. Yeah. Pete, did you ever do Sullivan? Uh, no, I never did uh, Sullivan. I was scheduled to do it, in fact, right near the end when the studio went off. I was doing a, a show that was a competition to Ed at the time out of the same studio, a CBS show, Studio 50, I think they used to call it in New York. Now it's called the Ed Sullivan Theater. But I was doing a show called On Broadway Tonight, which was exactly the same premise as Sullivan, and hmm. used to play, you know, right next was to Was it a Sullivan. New York regional? But no, it was played all over the country. Oh, it was a network, network show. Yeah, it was a CBS show. And it was hosted by different people, and the most memorable one was Rudy Valley. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. Who, who was, that was right around the time when he had the hit uh, Winchester Cathedral or something. Oh, yeah. And made his comeback. You know, he's about 100 then, I think. <laughs> but the point around. of it is, Sullivan might have been a little touchy with you. Only Sullivan, yeah. Sullivan was, uh, in fact, his people called me, and they said, uh, you know, we'd like to use you, but we, we have to sit down, because they saw me on Steve Allen. They said, we'd like to sit down, because your material's... You know, uh, we're not sure Ed would know what you were talking about, you know. You know. I've only got a couple of minutes here, uh, Pete. I, I think have all day, Dennis. <laughs> you can go off if you choose I, to. I just saw Julius. You made me drive out to this <laughs> crappy studio. I'm going to stay here all day and do a special. <laughs> well, I know it is a weird studio. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. <laughs> well, especially you having been in all the best in New York and Los Angeles. Well, this is really... It's different, uh, isn't it? Yeah, this one is. <laughs> this one is. <laughs> Maybe there's a piece on this bit you could... Uh, Add to your there's, show. A, there's an old burlesque line that really fits this. Uh, this is a building that was never new. <laughs> when they built this, they used old boards and old nails and old paint. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, needless to say, you're a, a very a, a great treat to have on the show, Thank Pete. You, and you're uh, you're as popular as anybody in Vegas has ever been or well, will that's very be. Very nice of you to say. Well, because there are some great great people here. You know, Shecky and all those wonderful comics who lived here over the years, and they're well, idols of mine. And they're idols of mine, too, as yeah. you are, and you fit right I alongside. I didn't know that, Dennis, or well. I wouldn't have done this show. <laughs> I thought I was your only idol. <laughs> Me and Jack Hogan are your idol. <laughs> oh, I love those. Those knock me out. Anyway, Pete, thank you, and have a great stay at the Landmark. Thank and, you, uh, Dennis. You're, you have a great boss over there, uh, Mr. Morris. He's doing yeah, good things. Yeah, Bill, our, uh, all of our kids went to school together. I've known Bill a long time, and he's a good guy. Incidentally, my daughter had a baby yesterday. No, this show plays tomorrow? Uh, yeah. Tomorrow morning. Yeah, what's today? Then today uh, is Wednesday. Yeah, Thursday morning. She had her baby Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Pete. Congratulations. Thank you all. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Happy holidays to all of you. And stay with us because we're coming right back. Maybe we are. Maybe we are. <laughs>